So today is June 21st, 2015. Um, it's about just a little bit more than three days since the massacre in Charleston where a white guy who is a white supremacist went into a church, sat through a Bible study, and at the end of the Bible study, opened fire and shot and killed nine people. And this was at a historically black church, and of course all black victims. So um, it's, it's been a really heartbreaking tragedy and you know, people across the nation, of course, are heartbroken. And on top of the fact that this is not an isolated incident, there's been so much going on lately with police officers killing unarmed black people and who's just really, really been under attack lately. And, you know, I've been out there protesting and, and doing what I can to, you know, try to work towards some kind of progress where we can get some justice and and not just have to live with that being the reality that black people just aren't safe and we just get gunned down in the street at any given time and you know nothing ever happens to the killers because they're protected by this system that you know, supports white supremacy and is anti-black and sees black people as less than human and as if our lives don't matter. So, you know, it's been really frustrating and um, really exhausting at times seeing how this happens and how we're murdered and nothing happens to the murderers aside from maybe a paid vacation. Um, so anyways, there was a call for action, um, you know, for people to stand in solidarity with the victims in the Charleston massacre. And honestly, I was just so hurt and just, like I was at a loss of words and it was hard for me to even do anything but cry over the last few days. But um, I decided that I am going to do some sort of a response and being that I'm an artist and, and I'm a poet amongst other things. I'm just gonna express my sentiment and show my solidarity through poetry. Um, yeah, it's, it's really heartbreaking what happened. And I've been feeling not only the pain of that situation, but there's just so much corruption in the world and there's just so many things that are so hurtful. So. I just, I need to speak my heart. I need to get stuff off my chest um, and just really express how I'm really feeling about everything. So this is the best way that I know how to do it. So this is a poem that I wrote today. The devil comes as an angel of light. Too many times I've been pierced by his deceit. I've tried so hard to believe in love. So many short-lived short victories have ended in defeat. I've tried to believe that in this world, some pure and kind hearts do exist. That in spite of all of the evil and hate, there is some goodness in our midst. I've bandaged up my broken heart and offered it again. Second chances bring second injuries. Second beginnings bring second ends. On my way to 70 times 7, and I'm not sure if I'm strong enough to make it. Been used, betrayed, and violated too many times to count, and I'm not sure if I'm strong enough to take it. My people are relentlessly oppressed. We're still murdered and abused with impunity. And I'm not sure if I'm more hurt by the oppressors or by my so-called brothers who don't give a damn about standing in unity. They disrespect me and fail to protect me, especially from themselves. They lie, they flake, they cheat, they rape. They manipulate and yell. So many men abuse and misuse like they don't care what's right or wrong. Because disrespect is what's trendy and deceit is what's hot. It's in all the popular songs. People's minds receive a steady diet of immoral philosophies. Through music, social media, so many places, our, our hearts and our minds are diseased. In a sin-sick world where we all need a doctor, but those who offer healing are often fakes. 
And there's so much confusion and so much delusion that numbness is the only way some know how to take a break. Numbness through drugs, sex, or alcohol, anything to distract from the pain. Shelter in the arms of abusive partners, just anything to prevent being alone in the rain. Lord, we all need a healing. The process may be painful, but avoidance and denial aren't sufficient. Lord, we all need renewal of our minds. Remove the clutter and false teaching. Fill us up where we're deficient. Lord, give us eyes that see the truth and can discern what's fake from what's real. Give us a peace that's not stolen by tragedy and a relentless joy that we can feel. Give us truth and love and freedom and hope. Give us protection in a way that we can cope in the midst of oppression and justice and tears. Give us a way, Lord, to conquer our fears. No justice, no peace. We cry out in the streets as we march and we pray, but the violence has not ceased. Is it all in vain? Do you feel our pain? Nine murdered in your house. What progress have we gained? They were studying your word with a demon in disguise. In exchange for their love and acceptance, he stole from them their lives. When will the violence end? How many more must be sent to their graves? The people who we're expected to love hate us no less than they did when we were slaves. And some of us are still enslaved in our minds. How can we move forward divided? When some are so blind and don't wish to see, how can we ever be united? There's no way that we can make it if you don't intervene. We poured ourselves out till there's nothing left and not much progress is seen. Have mercy on your daughters. Have mercy on your sons. Instruct us and direct us. Help us see that you're the one. Remove the pride that hinders us from submitting to your way. Give us a sign that you're listening and that you hear us when we pray. Forgive us for attempting to conquer Goliath on our own. Put right thinking in our minds, then put power in our stones. The battle won't be won without you. It's so clear that this is true. Repair the wounds and help us soon, the only answer is you.